problems with sequences always arise in the tail of the sequence. What happens for large values of n? So that will be our first task. How do we distinguish, say, well-behaved sequences from not so well-behaved sequences? That is what you will learn in this video. So a sequence, you know that between the brackets is the a n, n from 1 to infinity, the index, is said to be convergent if the limit n to infinity of a n equals l if this limit exists. So what does this mean formally? Well, formally that means that if uh, n is big enough that we can get arbitrarily close to the limit l with all elements of our sequence. So we have our sequence a n. First it can jump around a bit, but at a certain point from a certain n on we have our l and all the elements of our sequence should get close to this l. I've written out formally as follows. For every epsilon bigger than zero, I typically think of epsilon as a small value, then we have a capital N, which is typically big. We have a capital N in the tail somewhere, such that the elements of our sequence all get very close, arbitrarily epsilon close to L, provided you are far enough. So that's what it says in words. Your A N get arbitrarily close, that's the epsilon, to your L, provided you take your N, your capital N, big enough. So let's do an example with that. Our uh, sequence A N, N from 1 to infinity, where we set A N to 1 over N. So what happens if N gets large? So n equals 10, we have 1 over 10.1, n equals 100, we have 0.01, n equals 1000, we have 0.001. So you see already what's going to happen uh, if n goes to infinity, our elements become arbitrarily small. So we have the limit a n, limit n to infinity, uh, equals l equals 0. So how are we going to prove that? Well, what we need to do is that we have to find for every epsilon bigger than zero, a capital N such that all our elements become small. So how, we, how do we set our capital N? Well, we choose our capital N as 1 over epsilon, where we round up. So epsilon may be something like uh, zero, 0 0.3, and then uh, 1 over epsilon would become 1 over 0 0.3, that need not mean integer, so we round up. And what happens then? Well, our absolute value of a n minus uh, l, a n equals 1 over n, uh, l equals 0, so absolute value of 1 over n. Well, all our n's are positive, so that equals 1 over n. Well, n, small n, is uh, bigger equal than uh, capital N, so uh, 1 over uh, small n is smaller than equal than 1 over capital N. And we have chosen uh, 1 over n to be uh, equal to 1 over epsilon. So uh, uh, 1 over n is then again smaller than epsilon. So we see our a n minus l gets smaller than any epsilon bigger than zero, provided you pick your capital N big enough. You have to pick your capital N such that capital N equals 1 over epsilon. So this is how you show formally that this limit equals zero. So let's take a, few, a look at a few examples where the limit does not exist. Uh, Easy sequence this one, uh, a n minus 1 to the power n, what ha what's happening? It starts at minus 1, then jumps to 1, then to minus 1, then to 1, then to minus 1, then to 1. Okay, the sequence is uh, bounded in the sense that the, the elements will not uh, go uh, away to infinity, but you keep jumping from plus 1 to, uh, plus one to minus 1. So you will never approach uh, a number l uh, in, the, in the limit. So that means that this limit does not exist. Another e uh, example of a sequence, again, we have our Fibonacci sequence. Uh, first two terms equal 1. And for n bigger equal to 3, uh, uh, a n is a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2. So what happens? You get 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. And you'll see the numbers get bigger and bigger. So if you take limit n to infinity, this limit does not exist. So here you have seen 
a few uh, examples of sequences which are, which are divergent, the last two where the limit does not exist, and an example of one sequence which is called convergent where the limit does exist.